If you're considering moving to Tampa, Florida in 2024, grab a pen and a notepad because this is your ultimate relocation guide. Now, moving to a new city or state can be incredibly overwhelming. And I'm sure if you're anything like me, your head is full of questions that you have to have answered before you make that move. Questions like, is Tampa a good place to live? What are the best neighborhoods? Is Tampa safe? How's traffic and how long is my commute really going to take? The cost of living. What are the best schools? And many, many more. Right now, you're probably wondering how I knew all your questions. Well, five years ago this month, as a matter of fact, I packed up my family of five and we moved 1,200 miles south from Detroit, Michigan to Tampa, Florida and have been loving it ever since. But it hasn't come without its challenges. And my goal with this video is to really kind of demystify some of those things that you probably have in your mind that you need to get answered. That way you can make a really qualified decision about whether this is going to be the best move for you. And be sure to save this video because we're going to cover why Tampa, a neighborhood overview, the cost of living, employment, education and schools, lifestyle and recreation, climate and weather, pros and cons of living in Tampa, and moving tips. And if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm also a licensed real estate agent here with the True Living Group, where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. All of my contact information is listed down below. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule a time that's most convenient for you because when it comes to making this jump, trust me, it is a big decision and we're more than happy to help. Now, I can vividly remember this process when we were trying to figure out where in Florida we wanted to live. Um, Kate and I are fortunate enough to where you know we got to decide where we wanted to move to. We weren't really bound by having to go to a place because of work. I know a lot of our clients come to us because of relocation and that's totally fine, but we got to make the decision. Where did we want to live? Now, my father-in-law lived on the East Coast of Florida, still does, in a, in a town called Jensen Beach. Beautiful little coastal community. We thought for sure we were gonna live there. For almost eight years, I was convinced that we were moving there. Kate and I both were. But as the time got closer, you know, we had spent more time in Florida exploring other areas, maybe just like you've done. Maybe you haven't done any of that. But we started that research phase of what is this going to look like? Now, when we started this, there weren't channels like this dedicated to helping you better understand the areas. It was very much go to Dr. Google, type in, hey, what are the best places to live in Florida? Or, you know, what is driving the economy in X city, you know, Jacksonville or Orlando? And this is really how we started this process. And then we took a trip in January of 2017 spent an entire month of the state exploring different communities. Went to Jacksonville. We went to Orlando. Um, of course, we went to Stewart Jensen Beach where my father-in-law was. And then Tampa was really last on our list only because we hadn't explored it enough. Um, all of the things that mattered, like population that was growing and getting younger, the economy was getting stronger, uh, housing was good, cost of living was low. All of those things checked the box in Tampa, but we just didn't know anything about it. So it was kind of like, off to the side. And lo and behold, here we are five years later, permanent residents of Tampa, Florida, and absolutely love it. So my goal today, like I said, is really to kind of help you shake some of those things out. Now, the questions that I'm sharing with you now come to us from all of our clients. You know, we've had over 200 Zoom calls um, of people just like yourself, maybe, who have reached out to us about moving to the area. We get a lot of information. And we're the goal of today's video is to share back that info with you and the exact same exercises I use. So I spent the last two years documenting this entire Tampa Bay area with the hopes that it would help people just like you, because again, we didn't have this resource when we moved. So, you know, just wanted to share a little bit of insight, you know, really trying to help you understand the value of today's video. And I hope you get a ton of value from today's video. And if you do, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That way you can be notified every time we drop a new video just like this. So the first question I want to tackle is why Tampa? You know, over the last 10 years, Tampa has become very popular. And over the last four, it has literally exploded in popularity. You know, from the low cost of living, mild weather, incredible world-class beaches like Clearwater Beach and St. Pete Beach. You know, we've got great sports teams. Um, you know, there's something for every lifestyle here in the greater Tampa Bay area. And Tampa was recognized as one of the 50 best places in the world to live by Time Magazine. And just recently, it was recognized by WalletHub as the greatest place 
place in America to retire, which I found fascinating because on average, the median resident age here in the city of Tampa is 36 years old. It is a very young city. Most people don't know that. They think Florida, they may think retirees, but that is not the case in Tampa proper. Now the greater Tampa Bay area, of course that changes, right? Depending on what area you're gonna live. And we're gonna get deep into the suburbs and urban and neighborhood living. So, so bear with me on that, but there's a lot going for Tampa, right? So this is why people are choosing to call Tampa home and why it's become so popular over the last 10 years. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is give you a neighborhood and just general geography overview because I think that's extremely helpful. I know when we first came here, we just really didn't understand the layout of, of the greater Tampa Bay area. What is Tampa? What's Tampa Bay? And there's all kinds of things to, to take into consideration there. Most importantly, what is your ideal lifestyle? And we're gonna get way deeper into that. But the thing I kinda wanna do is just give you an understanding of how each area lives and what it feels like, the type of real estate you can expect to find there, the overall community amenities. I just wanna give you a little bit of insight because Tampa's an old city for those of you who aren't aware. Um, you know, it's been around a long time. St. Pete is one of the very first established cities, um, it, you know, in the greater Tampa Bay area. And we've got some old real estate and just really well-developed communities, but that's not everybody's ideal lifestyle. <laughs> some people want new construction, new housing. Some people want old character. Some people want to be by the beach. Some people want that urban lifestyle. And this is really what you have to figure out. So I want to be able to jump into the map and just kind of show you. I also want to give you some perspective on drive times kind of thing in here too, but just to give you some insights on what that looks like. Now, the city of Tampa, Tampa proper, is located right at the the, the middle of the bay, if you will, here. And this is um, Tampa here at the bottom of um, the little peninsula. That is where the Air Force Base is, MacDill Air Force Base. And then you come up in here in the Channel Side District. And uh, this is Tampa, you know, proper, if you will, right? It runs a little far north and we can get into the city um guidelines here but the the important thing is for you guys to understand when people are talking about tampa they're talking about this general region here okay the city of tampa now you can get deeper in downtown and, and i'll show you that later right downtown tampa is a very small section and what i tell people is tampa is a it's a um little big city is the best way i describe it now the greater tampa bay area has over 3.2 million residents we're not small you know and that's going to be you know essentially from this um Bradenton area, you know, over in Olithia, Plant City, technically, Zephyr Hills, Dade City, um, all the way up into Hudson. You know, this is kind of what people are talking about when they're talking about Tampa Bay. Sarasota, I mean, it's as close, you know, to the south here, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's as close um, to Tampa as Dade City is or San Antonio, but people really kind of consider Sarasota something a little bit different. And it is, it lives a little bit different. The median age of the resident gets older um, or wiser, depending on how you want to look at that. So just keep that in perspective. When you get into Sarasota County, the, the median age there is 55 plus. So you kind of already get into that mix of, you know, what is your ideal lifestyle? If you're looking for younger, you know, if you want um, a more urban lifestyle, you're definitely going to want to stick to Tampa, 36 years of age. Um, if you're looking for maybe more something that aligns with, you know, maybe you have a family or you, you're looking to grow a family. When you move out into Pinellas County, which is um, the peninsula here, um, out on the bay, uh, this area here, and technically it goes from Tarpon Springs, so forgive me, Tarpon Springs all the way down. This area is right around 46 years of age, so something to keep in perspective. And then as you get up in the northern suburbs like Wesley Chapel, Zephyr Hills, San Antonio, you know, Lando Lakes, Odessa, this this is also going to be one of those areas that's like 45 to 46 years of age um, on average, right? So you've got young working professionals that live out in those suburbs up north. You've got um, growing families that live in that, and there are retirees there as well. They're actually building multi-generational housing out there right now but this in the north here in pasco county so san antonio wesley chapel lando lakes odessa this area here is where a majority of our new construction is happening here in the greater tampa bay area if you want something that has a little bit more character in it you're typically going to find that in tampa proper um, and then also when you move out to pinellas county where clearwater beach in st petersburg florida st pete has 100 year old homes which is fascinating lots of character there some really small little 700 and 800 square foot bungalows um, but you can also find the beautiful beautiful, you know, properties right on the Gulf of Mexico that are brand new. But on average in Pinellas County, you're going to see a lot of homes that were built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, because that's where this area really started to grow with the popularity of the beaches. So 
block style homes, they call them ramblers or ranch style properties. If you've seen that single story, low roof lines, you're gonna find those in the areas. But this is where, you know, if you're interested in living in the beach, this is a great place to come check out because there aren't really any property proper beaches in uh, the greater, um, in, in Tampa proper, right? So when you look at this coastline here, there's a couple beaches you can come hang out on, but for the most part, that's not gonna be the type of lifestyle that you're thinking. When you're thinking of that 27 miles of white sugar sand beaches that you see all over the news all the time, that's really starting from Clearwater Beach, working its way all the way down into Paso Grill Beach and um, the Keys down here. This is all very similar style beaches. That's the dirty little secret that most people don't know. Clearwater Beach and St. Pete Beach fight for the best beach in America, but the 27 miles of shoreline there all feels very similar. The thing that does change is the coastal community behind it. That's where you get into those nuances. Um, some great areas and locations to look at here. If you're a beach baby, think Pinellas County. When you get north of there, even in the Tarpon Springs, they've got some decent beaches, but when you move up into Newport Ritchie, uh, Port Ritchie, uh, Hudson area. These beaches are not what you're thinking when you're thinking about that white sugar sand. There's a lot more coastal um, waterways here um, to the north, you know, a lot of vegetation. We don't have those beautiful crystal clear beaches and they're not nearly as blue. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, again, that suburban sprawl is happening to the north. So if you travel up 75, um, 275 up into 75. This Wesley Chapel, Lutz, Lando Lakes area is one of the most popular areas in the entire Tampa Bay area right now. It's growing like crazy. Beautiful amenities up there. We've done tons of videos on those in the past, so make sure you check those out. Check out our Wesley Chapel videos. They'll blow your mind. We've done San Antonio. We've done... Um, everything up north there so you can check those out but great area now as you move out towards the east here um, of the uh, of the uh, city you know you get into areas like plant city uh, lithia fish hawk coming down ruskins Wyamama, parish parish is becoming extremely popular this is manatee county technically but it's becoming an extremely popular extension of the greater tampa bay area it's about an hour drive time from there to downtown saint um i'm sorry tampa and only about 45 to 50 minutes over to saint pete beach so you can just jump on the bridge here and be right on one of those nice sugar sand beaches right away just to get a little bit of perspective we get a lot of questions about this apollo beach ruskins um, area here um, good area for sure, but it doesn't have those white sugar sand beaches. Um, you know, not necessarily the same style of living. The Bay is not the Gulf beaches. I want to make sure that you guys are clear on that because people will see, hey, there's the Bay. You know, you, you think white sugar sand beaches, but this area here is not the same. You know, we've got our, um, our landfill is up in this area up here. Um, their uh, electrical you know, plant is there. There's a smoke to uh, smokestack tower that's there. There's a lot of things that kind of interfere with those views. So it's not necessarily the same. I'm not saying it's a bad area, just you need to know what you're looking at. You know, and this is part of the reason why you're looking at this, uh, this, um, this video, right? A lot of the suburban sprawl that happened you know, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, that was happening in this uh, Brandon Riverview area that you see here. Very popular, like I was telling you before, you got that Fishhawk Lithia area here. They're still building new construction in Lithia. Fishhawk has one of the best school districts in all of the um, entire Tampa Bay area, public schools. Uh, but their community was built in the 90s and 2000s. You know, um, something to take a look at over there it was prior right um, to the giant um, economic clap collapse in housing that's what was growing over here but this area was really kind of established in that time as really one of the first suburban sprawls um, in the entire greater tampa bay area so just keep that in perspective as well drive times can be pretty tough you know from plant city to downtown tampa at peak driving times can take over an hour at non-peak driving times you could be downtown in 20 minutes so definitely something to take into consideration same thing when you're driving from tampa to clearwater beach that's about a 45 minute drive you can be from clearwater beach to the airport in as little as 30 minutes or as much as 50 depending on traffic anywhere in uh, on the Gulf specifically so if you're in St. Pete Beach or Passa Grill or Indian Rocks Beach Clearwater Beach even Palm Harbor you can pretty much be to the airport in about 45 minutes or less on average give yourself about 45 minutes and our airport is awesome um, it's up here on the northwest side of the city uh, I know I'm making a mess of this, so bear with me. Um, and it is super easy to get in and out of. TPA is the airport number. Um, it's a great ride. Uh, you've also got 
uh, access to the Veteran Memorial Highway, which, which travels all the way up into Odessa. So if you choose Odessa, which is a great suburb of Tampa, you can be to downtown in 35 minutes. You can be to the airport in 25 minutes. Gives you pretty easy access. From Wesley Chapel up here in the northern suburbs to downtown Tampa, depending on the, on the time of day, can be as little as 30 minutes, can be as much as 55 with traffic. So keep that in perspective. Same thing with San Antonio. It's further north, but it's closer to the highway. So it's actually a pretty easy drive. You're going to be looking about 50, 50 minutes to an hour to get to downtown Tampa um, with traffic. If you go on an off time, you can make it much sooner, 35 to 45 minutes. So keep that in perspective. But these are drive times in the greater Tampa Bay area, something to just kind of wrap your mind around. Um, and I wanted to give you just a brief overview of the city. I know this map's a mess, but um, it, you know, if, again, if you guys have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All my contact information is down there for a reason. Ask questions. We're here to be of service. I hope this helps. Now, when it comes to the cost of living here in Tampa, great thing to know is we actually sit here right in that median range. We're on par with the rest of the United States. Currently, our housing is a little bit more expensive, but last month it was a little less. So we've kind of fallen in that range. The thing that I tend to see that we spend a little bit more money on is groceries. I've done an entire video breaking down the cost of living line by line in a budget. You can go check that out. Um, I'll make sure that we tag that in the description down below. But this chart from Payscale is great. It breaks down each category, which is something awesome to look at. And if you really want to know how your salary stacks up, you know, let's say you're moving because of a job, the Forbes calculator is awesome. You can put in what city you're moving from, um, and then it'll adjust for your lifestyle from there. This is a great tool. Whenever clients reach out to me about making the jump, you know, say from Boston to Massachusetts, which is very common in New York, um, I always send them this calculator. It's a great reference. It'll break it down, again, based upon your salary, and then it shows you per category as well, right? The housing, groceries, transportation, um, energy costs. It breaks them down line by line versus what you're already spending. So it's a really good resource to check out. But overall, cost of living here in Tampa is actually extremely extremely affordable. And I tell people this all the time, when it comes to a coastal community, we're actually a really good value, especially when it comes to housing. Now, at the time of this recording, the median sales price for a home in the United States, according to Redfin, is right around $409,000. And the median sales price here in Tampa is right around $431,000. But I wanna get in a little bit deeper here. Because if you're looking to buy a single family home here in Tampa, the median sales price is right around 450. And the average, and I know people are like, what's the difference between median and average? Well, median is the middle of the activity and average is the average of the largest and the lowest, right? So like you go from the bottom to the top, the number that comes in between and total sales will give you the average. Now, averages are a little bit closer to what we see our clients buying on, in, on a day in, day out basis, but that's not always the case. But I wanted to share that with you. The average home price here that I'm seeing right now in the greater Tampa Bay area is just above $500,000. So that's what our clients are typically spending. They can spend much more, of course. You know, you can spend $15 million on a coastal property here if you want, but you can absolutely find a single family home in the low 400s or even the high threes from time to time as well. So keep that in perspective. But I want to kind of share some of these numbers with you because um, our market is very fluid. It's very dynamic and we're still attracting a lot of people. Like we said before, over a thousand people are still moving to Florida a day. So our real estate market is still kind of held up. But I want to share some of these numbers with you. Going back to the median sales price here in Tampa, it's $450,000 for a single family home. If you're going to move to St. Pete, that would be $435,000. And if you're looking at Clearwater, that's around $482,000. And then Wesley Chapel, which is one of our most popular suburbs, like we discussed earlier, um, that's right around $472,000. And you can see most of our single family home sales are still up in value. 11% up in Tampa, 11% up in St. Pete, 22% up in Clearwater last month. And then um, also just a little bit down in Wesley Chapel. Now this is month over month, not year over year. You know, we're up a few percentage points depending on where you look. And the type of housing is, is completely different in, um, based upon where you're going to move. If you're looking for a new construction, low Lower cost of ownership. This is something I always tell people, right? It costs less money to own a new home. They're built to better standards. Um, builders give you a 10 year structural warranty. You're gonna get a one year bumper to bumper if you buy a brand new property, literally. They will take care of almost every single problem unless you cause it, of course. Um, and most of the homes aren't in a flood zone. That's super important to know too because your insurance cost is gonna be much, much lower than if you buy a home that's you know 50 years old or 100 years old in a um, area that's prone to flooding. You know, 
our insurance rates are drastically vary depending on where you live. And this is something important to know. So when it comes to housing, please do your homework here. You know, don't hesitate to reach out to us and ask questions because there are a lot of factors to consider when buying a home in the area, right? Are you looking for a single family, a two story, um, all block construction, or are you, you know, somebody who is okay with buying a hundred year old stick built home um, that may need a lot of love and a lot of attention over time and also a lot of resources. So just keep that in consideration when you're considering moving in the area because there are a lot of things that you wanna make sure that you get right. That way you only have to move one time and you don't feel like you made a mistake. And the most important thing that I always stress with everyone is the biggest thing that you want to do here is you wanna make sure that you match the correct community to your ideal lifestyle. The houses tend to take care of themselves after that. Now there's two things I wanna recommend that you do with today's video. Number one, make sure that you save this. That way you can go refer to this in the future when you have questions or you're trying to measure it versus something that you're looking at online. Um, it's a great way to do that. I wish I would've had resources like this and we make these videos for you. And number two, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and the like button while you're down there. It really helps out the channel and it also helps other people like you who are trying to make this move a reality as well. Now when it comes to education in schools, Florida is extremely diverse and the rating systems that we use here in Florida may be different than where you come from. I know they were definitely different for us. When we moved from Metro Detroit, you know, schools were, were based upon the zip code that you lived in. We were not school of choice for the most part. Um, and rankings were very simple to kind of read and digest. You know, school would get an A through an F rating and you could clearly understand what that looks like. Um, here in Florida, they're not as simple and our education system is definitely different. So I wanna make sure that I prepare you for that. But you know, when it comes to K through 12, you have a great mix and a great opportunity here in the greater Tampa Bay area. We have public schools, we have great private schools, we have charter schools, we have magnet and STEM schools. There's a lot to choose from. From for sure. Some of the notable high schools in the area are Steinbrenner up in North Tampa, Plant High School in South Tampa, Palm Harbor University, East Lake in Tarpon Springs, and Wiregrass Ranch in Wesley Chapel. And the major university and colleges in the area are the University of South Florida, St. Pete College, University of Tampa, just to name a few. Now, when it comes to trying to judge, are these schools the right fit for you and your family? Uh, if you've got a school-aged child and you're trying to figure this out, there's two things that I really recommend you do. Number one, you go to the review sites online. Um, they are helpful. They are not the end-all be-all, so I wanna share that with you, but there are two really good sites that I, I always recommend. Greatschools.org and publicschoolreview.com are two wonderful resources um, that you'll be able to you know, kind of look at the rankings. Um, there are reviews on there from, from uh, parents as well. So that's one thing that I recommend doing. The second thing I recommend doing immediately is jumping into the community Facebook groups. You wanna know the real truth? Go ask all the parents. Um, who are in, so like go to the Wesley Chapel group if you're considering moving to Wesley Chapel, ask them about the schools, they will share. The thing I always tell everybody is make sure that you try to get a balanced perspective because people who are unhappy that leave reviews are are usually the loudest and people who you know sometimes have a really good experience don't always share that. So when you ask that in a public forum, just try to be mindful of it and it do your best to decipher the code, so to speak. But I think that they are tremendous resources and it's a great place to start. Now, when it comes to lifestyle, recreation, and activities here in Tampa Bay, I mean, you have everything at your disposal. There are so many different clubs, activities, sports, um, you know, water sports. You know, if you're an angler, do you kayak? Do you paddleboard? Are you a jet skier? Do you, you know, do you just like hanging out on the beach? Um, do you love pickleball? Do you love tennis? Do you love baseball? Do you love football? Do you love soccer? Do you love hockey? I mean, we have it in spades for days. I mean, literally, I mean, we've got the, the Tampa Bay Lightning here who have won multiple championships. There's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for professional sports team. We got the, the, the Tampa Bay Rays in St. Pete. You know, those are on the professional end. And also during spring training, you know, if, if you're a huge baseball fan, we've got the Blue Jays who come to Dun Eden every year. Um, you've got the Yankees who are at Steinbrenner 
Turner Field up in Tampa, which is awesome. Um, you've also got the Philadelphia Phillies here in Clearwater. I mean, if you head over to Lakeland, you can see the Tigers. If you go down to Sarasota, you know, you can see Baltimore. I mean, there's so many different opportunities to plug into. And we're just talking about sports, right? That active lifestyle. If you're a runner or a biker, or you just like to walk and be active and be outside, there are so many different opportunities and activities here in the greater Tampa Bay area for you to take advantage of. I mean, right now it's the middle of winter. And if you want to go sledding or go throw snowballs at each other, you can go to Snowcat Ridge up in Pasco County and, and take that opportunity. <laughs> and if you want to go jet skiing or kite surfing, you can do that in the Bay. So, I mean, there is something for everyone here. And the lifestyle is the real reason that a majority of the people decide to call Tampa Bay home. It's unbelievable, y'all. All right. When it comes to the weather, you know, we are completely blessed with the abundant sunshine we have here in the state of Florida. We're called the Sunshine State for a reason. And St. Petersburg is known as the Sunshine City. So like, you know, over 236 days of sunshine is an abundant amount. And I love soaking up the vitamin D. It's a huge part of the reason why we decided to move here. The effect that it has on your mood, the effect that it has on your temperament is second to none. I'm telling you right now, it's way better than therapy <laughs> um, and much cheaper too. But, you know, when it comes to the nitty gritty, the numbers, I want to share that with you because, you know, we have five months of absolutely incredible weather from November through March. Our average temperatures are in the 70s in December, January and February. They're in the low 70s. The other months were typically in the high 70s. We have a couple months where we average 80 degrees. And then we have that stretch in the summer, July, August, September, where the heat can be uh, oppressive is the term that I've heard people use. And I, I tend to agree, it is definitely hot. You typically see people get out and do their activities early in the morning during this time of the year, you know, whether it's running, walking, riding a bike, walking the dog, mowing the lawn, and then you don't see them again until, you know, roughly sunset because it is super hot. I mean, your air conditioner is running all the time during that time of the year, your car is a million degrees. These are things you need to take into consideration. But if you come from an area where you're used to freezing for six months out of the year and it's gray and dreary, trust me, this is an exchange that you are more than willing to make. Now, the other side of that comes along with it is we do have a hurricane season, right? Where we are challenged by, you know, the, the, the way that the world works every single year. And we've been extremely blessed here in the state of Florida. I mean, um, Tampa proper has not had a direct hit from a hurricane for, for over 105 years. Now we've had a couple of really close run-ins, you know, recently, uh, Ian and Adalia, um, and they did affect Tampa. You know, we had some flooding down there, but we, that was from surge, not from the actual hurricane. Um, you know, so these are considerations you need to take, you know, as, us as a family, we've just made the decision that if it's going to be a cat three or stronger, that we're going to leave, we're going to go either to the middle of the state or we'll take off and we'll go to, to Georgia and grab a hotel room. Not everybody has the ability to do that. I understand. Um, and, and the thing that I do recognize also is most Floridians don't leave when it's a cat three. They don't even start talking about leaving until it's a cat four. Our homes are built very, very well. And this is something that, that took me a second to kind of recognize. You know, when you think about that, there are homes in St. Petersburg and Tampa that are a hundred years old. Okay, some of them are older than 100 years old and they are still standing of wood construction. You know, we've got termites here. That's something that, that people keep in consideration. But to, to, to when you wrap your mind around that, a house that's 100 years old that has had to fight the heat, the sun and hurricanes um, is still standing. That gives you a little bit of confidence. And most of the homes that are built now in the area are all block construction reinforced with steel. I mean, these things are really built to last. So that is something to take into consideration. But, you know, I will gladly gladly exchange those three months of really warm weather for a great jury any day of the week. Maybe that's not you, I understand, but the other five months are incredible. That's why we have what we refer to as the season where the snowbirds come down. And if you've never heard the term snow, snowbird before, that is somebody who has moved from the north, um, who was relocated for the winter in the south, you know, and, and a lot of this comes from Canada, um, the, the northeast and the Midwest. There's a lot of people who own second homes here and spend the winters here. So, you know, when it comes to weather, you know, you're gonna get five incredible months. The other two, I think those are my favorite months. I love it when it's in the low eighties. And then you have three months of the rainy season when it's gonna rain almost every day. You can set your watch to it somewhere between three and 5 p.m. It might rain for three minutes. It might rain for 30. You don't know until it actually happens. But um, those three months, I'll exchange them for the cold, dreary, any day of the year. Maybe that's not you, but you know, when it comes to weather, now you know.
Now, when it comes to the pros and cons of living here in Tampa, there are a lot to consider. You know, you may be moving from an area that's extremely expensive to Tampa, which is relatively affordable, and that is a huge pro. Or maybe you're moving from a rural area that's, you know, not nearly as expensive as what you think Tampa is. So that could be a pro and con for you as well. Weather, like we just discussed, could be a pro and con for you. You know, if you live in San Diego, you have incredibly, just incredible weather, right? Almost considered perfect, you know, hardly any bugs, low humidity, you get abundant sunshine. The temperatures don't seem to ever get outrageous out there. I do know you have some heat spells as well. Um, but the times we've spent out in San Diego, the people, the Airbnbs were, I didn't even have air conditioners. I can't even wrap my mind around living in Florida without an air conditioner. Trust me, we wouldn't. <laughs> you have to have it, right? So, you know, that could be a pro and con for you as well. Um, transportation, you know, if you're moving from a major city that has a rail, um, you know, a train that you take every single day or there's cabs on every corner, that's not how it is in Tampa. You know, we have the rail car, um, we have ubers there are taxis but we don't have that type of infrastructure here so that is something to keep in perspective as well um, but you do have the ability to drive our road systems are great we don't have giant potholes in them like we did up north i, I love our roads here you know I we, when we drive back up north to go visit family, you know, we immediately know when we get back to Michigan because the cars can get swallowed in the potholes and the road conditions are just absolutely terrible. So for us, it's a huge win. Um, insurance costs more in the state of Florida, both housing and auto. So I think that that could be a con. Um, but we also don't have any state income tax. So if you're a high income earner, it's a wash. Um, for sure, or you could be to the positive on that end as well. Um, our groceries tend to be a little bit more expensive from what I what I see on average, um, but you know, healthcare is significantly less here in the state of Florida. Um, you know, so there's these pros and cons everywhere. And, and the thing that you have to try to figure out is what is best for you in your situation. Um, if you have more questions and you wanna get them answered, don't hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is down below. There's even a link to my calendar, as I said before, please feel free to use that. Um, I'll jump on a Zoom call with you, walk you through the entire Tampa Bay area. And our real focus is to match your ideal lifestyle with the correct community. And if nothing else, help you get some general questions answered. So don't hesitate to reach out to me and the team. Um, I'm gonna leave two more videos here that I think you're absolutely gonna love that are gonna help you make this decision as well. Hopefully make it a lot easier. Until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.